Okay, so what I want to do now that I've dimensioned all of the arrays, I'd like to initialize the weights. Um, however, I don't really want to just set them to zero. Um, and I suppose we could just set them to, I don't know, random, just a random double. Um, but just for the sake of being awesome, let's go ahead and distribute them uh, normally centered around zero. Uh, so we'll have just kind of a nice normal distribution of weights and biases from the very beginning. Um, and in fact, in the future, we can use this to perturb the weights in the network uh, for trading purposes, but that's way down the line. Okay, so right now we're gonna take a side step. Let's go ahead and collapse this constructors region. And let's create another static class, public static class. Uh, let's call it Gaussian, okay? And this, all it's gonna do is uh, have some methods in it that return random numbers that are distributed normally, okay? So public static void get random Gaussian. Now, why is this a void? I thought we we're supposed to be returning uh, a number here. Um, it turns out this algorithm, I forget the guys, I uh, probably should have figured that out first, but um, it returns two normally distributed random numbers. Um, and so I will in fact call this, I'll just overload it for one that returns it with a given mean and standard deviation. Uh, but this one will actually return two by reference. So get random Gaussian, double mean, double standard deviation. And let's go force it to be an output double val1, output double val2. And I guess the only time I would actually call this is when I know I'm going to need multiple uh, random numbers and I'd rather not waste an extra cycle calling this method again. So let's get double u, v, s, and t. Do. And we're going to do this while either uh, u squared plus v squared is greater than 1, or u is 0 and v is 0. Okay, what I need are two numbers, u and v, that are randomly distributed uh, inside the unit disk. And uh, that's, that's what this is going to give me. Oh, but they cannot be the origin, and they can't be on the boundary at radius 1. Um, I am going to need a random number generator. So let me put in here a private static uh, random. Let's call it gen. It's going to be a new random number generator. OK. So in here, let's do u is going to be 2 times gen dot next double uh, minus 1. v is going to be 2 times gen dot next double minus 1. All right. Um, yeah, I have to assign values. OK, so this 2 times uh, next double minus 1 gives us a number in the uniform distribution between negative 1 and positive 1, inclusive. Um, and we're going to keep randomly picking these numbers until we get one that's inside the disk, not on the boundary, and not at the origin. All right? So let's close that off. Once we have this, let's call s uh, u squared plus v squared. All right? So that's going to, oops, times v. It's going to be the square of the radius. T is going to be the square root. That's math.sqrt of, parenthetically, negative 2.0 times math.log. That's the natural log of our radius squared s. That's the numerator divided by s. Okay. This is specifically why 
u and v can't be 0 because we're going to divide by s here, and we can't divide by 0. And then from here, we can say val1 equals standard deviation times u. Now u is distributed uh, normally times t plus the mean. And the mean, right, that's just going to shift us over. Val2 equals standard deviation times v times t plus mean. Sorry, I said u is randomly distributed. That's not true. Um, t times u is randomly distributed. Uh, okay, so that assigns our values here. And that will return two of them. Now, what if I just want to return one? Let's make an overload public double get random Gaussian. Um, and we'll allow them to specify a mean and a standard deviation. In this case, I'm going to need rval1, rval2. Let's go ahead and call get random Gaussian of mean standard deviation rval1, rval2. Sorry, I need to specify the, these without. I'm aware, I'm passing them by reference. And then we're going to return one of them, OK? Um, so here we're throwing away the second value, which if we're in a situation where we need the second one, we can go ahead and not. Now to be even easier, uh, let's create another public. Oh, shoot. Sorry, this has to be static for a static class. Public static double get random Gaussian with no parameters. And this is just going to return get random Gaussian of, uh, sorry, mean 0, so centered at 0 with standard deviation 1. So that's just the standard normal distribution, OK? So that's cool. Um, so let's go back up to our constructors here and go down to where we were about to initialize the weights. And now we will actually do it. So um, let's make a for loop to go through all of the layers. For int l is 0, l is less than layer count l plus plus. Uh, like that. Um, now for the uh, for the two-dimensional arrays, I can scan through each of the nodes in the current layer. So let's go for int j equals zero. J is less than layer size of this layer j plus plus. For each of these, I can go ahead and just set them all. Okay. So let's see bias of L J is going to be Gaussian dot get random Gaussian, right? Just normally distributed. Um, and that's going to be the same for, uh, actually, sorry, none of these guys. So previous bias delta L J, we can just set that to zero. Remember, this is going to be what's holding the bias delta from the previous training iteration. So that's going to get replaced regardless. Layer output um, is similar. Every time we run this, we're just going to set it to whatever we had. Um, so as far as creation is concerned, let's just set them all to 0. And what else? Delta? Yeah. L J is 0. OK. Now, for the weights, we need to do something just like we did before. Um, for the current layer, I need to specify a node in the previous layer and a node in the current layer. So let's go make a for loop, int i equals 0. i is less than. Now, what is it less than? It's less than this expression here. If the layer is the first layer, um, what I really want is this to be bounded by the input size 
Otherwise, I need to look at the size of the previous layer. I++. Plus plus. And now, let's go through all of the nodes. J, J equals 0. J is less than layer size of L. So all the nodes of the current layer. J++. Plus plus. And let's say weight L I J equals Gaussian dot get random Gaussian. So that'll be normally distributed. And the previous weight of L I J, we can just set to zero because that'll get set the first time we run the network forward. Okay, so um, we're gonna scan through all the layers. Oh, sorry, that's supposed to be L. Uh, scan through all the layers. For each layer, go through each node on this layer. Uh, we're going to initialize the bias to a random normal number. We can set all those to zero. For each node in the previous layer, we're going to go through each node in the current layer and set the connective weight between the two to something random. Um, and then we'll set the previous ones to delta, uh, to zero. Okay, so let's um, go back and give it a shot. Collapse constructors. That's our network, we'll save it. Go back to the program. Now there's no uh, constructor here uh, that fits, right? Because now we have only a constructor where we're required to pass in an array of layer sizes and an array of transfer functions. So we're gonna need some of those. So let's say int array layer sizes um, equals new integer array, let's say there's three layers of size one, two, one, okay, arbitrarily. And we're gonna need a transfer function array, we'll call them t -funks. That's gonna be a new transfer function array of size three, and they will be transfer function dot none transfer function sigmoid and transfer function sigmoid. Okay, like so. Now we're gonna need to pass these in. Uh, layer sizes, t funks, just like that. Um, I think I may have paused this since last time. I had neglected earlier in the transfer functions here this is a static class. I had missed all of these need to have the static tag. Um, so go back and make sure that's in place if you <laughs> were very literally following me and forgot to put those there uh, because it's going to freak out and not run. All right, so we're back. Control Shift B. Build succeeds. Let's run it. Nothing happens because we have no output. Okay, press enter, it goes away. So it worked. Um, I guess perhaps we could make it do something interesting, but what that means is that uh, our constructor didn't bomb and uh, we should have a network all in place. All right, so that is it for constructors. Now we need to teach it how to learn.